Okay, so the second type of hybridization that we're going to see is sp2, uh, and that is going to help us explain uh, types of molecules that have this shape around the carbon atom, where you can see that there's three connections, uh, and the angle is 120 degrees. That's a vastly different shape from the methane molecule that we have seen before. Okay, so what we have here is the electronic configuration of carbon after the promotion step. And now we have to hybridize uh, uh, to try to explain that shape. Now the idea here is that, uh, distinctly from uh, sp3 hybridization, what we're actually going to do here is mix the 2s orbital with only two of the 2p orbitals. And this 2pc uh, orbital is going to be left and hybrid, it's going to be left in its natural state. Okay, uh, so then uh, uh, since you're mixing three at all atomic orbitals, you're going to get three hybrid orbitals. Now the question is, well, how does that mixing take place? Okay, so what we can actually do here is write what the uh, combinations, the linear combinations of these atomic orbitals are to um, give rise to the uh, hybrid sp2 orbitals. Well, the questions for uh, these combinations are actually not very important. I don't want you to know these normalization factors or even the coefficients for this particular hybridization. Right? So you will have that uh, the first hybrid orbital will just be uh, this. Okay, you just mix the uh, 2s orbital with a coefficient times the 2 uh, px orbital. Okay, uh, the second orbital will be something like this. This is the, SP, the second sp2 will be the square root of uh, 1 over 3, and then you will have that is the uh, 2s orbital minus uh, the square root of 1 half of the px orbital plus the square root of uh, 3 halves uh, times the py orbital or the 2py orbital. That will be the second uh, uh, of the three sp2 hybrid orbitals, and then you will have the three uh, sp2 hybrid orbital, which is going to be like this. All right, and again, the coefficients are not important. What we're actually going to do is look at them to justify that this is actually going to give rise to uh, uh, the 120 uh, degrees that we had uh, right there. In this case, this is minus 3 halves of Py, right? So let's try to uh, look at this linear combination and see what the resulted, uh, resulting hybrid atomic orbital should look like. Now, this is going to be much easier to draw than the uh, sp3 orbitals. Uh, because this is planar and we can actually do that reasonably well on a whiteboard. Okay, so I'm going to take this orbital and try to see how it should look like. All right, so this is my carbon atom, which will be at the center, and this is the 2s orbital, and this is the uh, 2px orbital, and I'm going to say that this is the positive part of the uh, orbital, and that is the negative part of the orbital, okay? And this is uh, all going to be all positive. Now the question is, well, what happens when you mix these orbitals like that? Well, what you're going to have is that, well, since these two parts are positive and these are wave functions, they're going to add uh, constructively to generate a new wave function. And here you're actually going to have that this will be sort of a destructive interference, so you, the, the wave is partially going to cancel out, out there. Okay, so the shape of this resulting orbital is going to be something like this. This is carbon. You're going to have just a little bit of amplitude right here, and then a large amplitude right there. Okay, so that would be the first of my sp2 hybrid orbitals, okay? And again, that is just the 2s, and this will be the 2px orbital, okay, with the 2s. Let me label that uh, correctly inside there. Again, that's just this first linear combination, and again, you can actually do this with the full-blown uh, wave functions, which have very difficult, very tricky shapes, but we're actually just doing this uh, qualitatively using uh, uh, just the shapes of how they should look like, okay? So that will be the first uh, hybrid uh, sp2 atomic orbital. Uh, what about the second one? All right, so the second one is going to be like this. Okay, notice uh, that now we actually have uh, the 2s orbital, but now the px is actually subtracting. It has a different coefficient, but it's subtracting. So the way to actually draw this would be to draw the same 2px orbital, but now the signs are reversed. This will be the negative part of the orbital, and that will be the positive part of the wave function, okay? And then we actually have to uh, add here what the 2py orbital should be. It has a positive contribution, so uh, if this is the positive direction in the y-axis, what you actually have is that the wave function is going to look something like this, plus and minus, and there's going to be the 2py. Okay, so the question is, uh, how does this uh, mixing of orbitals uh, result in a new orbital? Well, what you're going to have is that 
notice that the positive part of the three orbitals are going to be pointing right here, right there, and right there. Okay? So what you're actually going to have is an orbital that points in this direction. And it turns out it's going to be something like this. Okay? That will be the second uh, hybrid sp2 orbital. And it turns out that because of these coefficients are like this, the angle between these two uh, orbitals is going to be exactly 120 degrees. Okay, so again, the choice of these coefficients is actually what tells you that indeed the angle between these three uh, two S, uh, sp2 hybrid orbitals is going to be uh, 120 degrees. Using the same rationalization, we, we could actually go and try to see how the third uh, sp2 hybrid orbital should look like. Okay, and the only difference is going to be that notice that the uh, px is actually exactly the same, the same uh, coefficient in the linear combination. The only difference is that the py is actually uh, a negative sign. So the only thing that we're going to do is change the sign of that orbital like that. And now we'll have this linear combination. So how is going to be the resulting orbital? Well, the resulting orbital is going to be uh, pointing towards here, and the wave is partially going to cancel that way. Okay, so you're going to have a tiny little uh, probability density right there, and the other orbital is going to be pointing along this way. This is going to be your uh, third sp2 hybrid orbital. And again, uh, that's not a great picture, but it should be all of these angles are actually going to be 120 degrees. Okay? So that is uh, uh, your three sp2 hybrid orbitals. Now, what we can't forget is that we actually have not uh, involved the 2pc orbital in this hybridization. And you can't forget that. The 2pc orbital is going to actually come in, be coming out uh, inside the plane and out of the plane. And each one of these orbitals is actually going to have now uh, one electron and the 2 pc orbital is also going to have one electron. So if you were to draw the electronic configuration, what's going to happen is that uh, this is what you get. Those are your three sp2 uh, hybrid orbitals, and each one has one electron, and then you're going to have your 2 pc natural and hybrid orbital that also has one electron. Okay, so what we're actually going to do now is I'm going to erase this uh, geometric justification for why these orbitals are uh, in the same plane and 120 degrees from each other, and try to see if, with, is, if by using uh, balanced mode theory, I can uh, justify the shape and the uh, electronic structure of that molecule. Okay, so let's see if we can do that. Right, so the story here would be that let's see if we can draw uh, uh, the balanced mode diagram for uh, that molecule, which is called ethylene. Okay, so uh, each carbon atom is going to be like this. Okay, you're going to have an sp2 hybrid orbital. Uh, which has one electron, another one that has one electron, and another one that has one electron right here, sp2 and sp2. And then you're going to have your PC coming in out of the plane. And the way that I'm actually going to draw this is by uh, pointing the 2PC along here. Again, it's difficult to draw three dimensions in just two, but suffice, suffice it to say that in this case, we're actually considering that the three sp2 hybrid orbitals in the plane of the blackboard or the whiteboard, and then you have the 2PC coming in and out of the plane. Okay, so the question is, well, how are going to be uh, uh, the overlaps between these wave functions of the carbon atom that is now hybrid uh, with the rest of atoms? Okay, so uh, it's actually not going to be that complicated. Okay, uh, the other carbon atom is actually going to be, uh, it's going to have exactly the same shape. Okay, so I can draw here the other carbon atom as uh, having here one of the sp2 hybrid orbitals pointing towards uh, this first uh, hybrid orbital of the other atom, so that you can actually have a sigma overlap right here. And then you will have your uh, the other sp2 hybrid, uh, hybrid orbital, and the last sp2 hybrid orbital. Okay, there's an sp2 uh, with one electron like that, sp2 with one electron like that. And again, those are all 120 degrees from each other. On top of that, you're going to have the unhybrid 2pc orbital of uh, this second uh, carbon atom coming in and out of the plane, and the way that we draw is, is, is just uh, in this axis. All right, so uh, notice that you actually have now a sigma overlap right here, but uh, there's also an overlap that in this case is Sidon from the unhybrid natural to PC orbitals that are singly occupied. That's what we call a pi uh, overlap. And notice that we actually have the double bond going, right? Uh, the sigma part of this double bond is uh, formed by the head and overlap of two sp2 uh, hybrid orbitals, and the pi component is formed by the uh, side overlap 
uh, not head on like sigma by side on uh, of these natural um, 2 pc orbitals uh, which again form a pi overlap. Okay, well you could, we can uh, wrap up this structure by saying that well uh, those uh, sp2 hybrid orbitals that have one electron are actually going to be overlapping with the one is wave functions of uh, neighboring uh, hydrogen atoms. Okay, let me rewrite that, that is sp2 okay, that is 1s and uh, that means that well since those orbitals are actually 120 degrees from each other, that explains that this shape is actually that you're going to find about 120 degrees uh, from that. Okay, so this is what we, uh, how we explain sp2 hybridization, how you apply it to uh, the molecule of ethylene in this case. All right.